This lesson deals with the NPN bipolar junction transistor. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 10, starting on page one. The NPN bipolar junction transistor is a three terminal device where this terminal is called C for the collector, this terminal is called B for the base, and this terminal is called E for the emitter. Turns out the emitter emits electrons and the collector collects electrons and the base is a kind of a gate, letting electrons flow or not flow. Between the base and the emitter and the base and the collector, there are two diodes shown here. And the reason it's called an NPN transistor because this is N material, P material, and this is N material. If you solder two diodes together, you actually won't make a transistor because it has another element here, which is a nonlinear function of the base emitter voltage and the collector emitter voltage. This has to do how the electrons are flowing in the pieces of material. We can also label the voltages across the terminals. The first terminal is the positive, the second is the negative. So put the plus sign by the P and the minus by the N, just like we did for diodes in chapter nine. Here's the collector and the emitter between here and here. The current coming in the collector we'll call I sub C, the current coming in from the base we'll call I sub B, and the current leaving we'll call I sub B. These are normally all positive numbers. Let's take a look at a graph of some of these voltages and currents. If you plot the voltage across the base emitter versus the base current, you get a diode, which is exactly what this is. If you plot the voltage across the collector emitter versus the collector current, you get what's called a family of curves. In other words, if I had a current in the base, I'll call it I sub B1, and I begin to increase the voltage across the collector emitter, what will happen at the output is we'll start over here, come up, and then level out with a multiple of the value of I sub B1. If the base current is I sub B2, we would be on this curve. Likewise, if we were for I sub B3 on this curve, the value of the base current that determines the value of the collector current. It's a constant multiple of a specific base current when you're operating in this region here. I just like the diode, we're gonna have some different regions. We're gonna call them different names. This region here marked in red is called the active region. Turns out we can make an amplifier in this region. And when you have a positive base current, you're operating somewhere along the curve here as I've marked in red. When you operate along here, it's referred to as the saturation region, where the voltage across the collector emitter is fairly constant. We're gonna call that V sub CE saturation. Now while you're operating over here, the base current's always positive or zero. We're on this curve also. And the third region is operating over here where we have no base current and we have no collector current marked with this blue line. We're going to call that the cutoff region. The transistor can be in one of three regions. I'm trying to model this with a piecewise linear model. We'll use the same method we did for diodes called assumed states. Now let's first write down everything that's true in a given state. So if we're in the active region, the following things are true. The base emitter voltage is equal to a constant. Again, so we brown like 0.7 volts like we did for a diode. The base current is greater than or equal to zero. The collector emitter voltage is greater than or equal to V sub C E sat. This is typically about 200 millivolts. The collector current is greater than or equal to zero. Here's on one of these lines. And then lastly, the collector current is a multiple of the base current. These are all the things that are true when you're in the active region. Now what's also true when this is going on is that the base emitter diode is forward biased and the base collector diode is reverse biased. This is handy when you're trying to repair something. You could just take a digital voltmeter and measure the voltage across the base emitter and the base collector, and you can determine whether the transistor is working or not. Now, if we take all these conditions, can we build a model that does all of these things? The answer is no. We can do some of them. We'll take a look at this on the next page. One of the conditions for being in the active region is that the base emitter voltage is equal to VBE on. We could model that with a voltage source. We also had that the collector current was equal to beta FIB. We could use a current controlled current source to create a current that's a multiple of another current. Now we also had that I sub B was greater than or equal to zero. And in a voltage source, current can go this way or it can go this way. So we can't guarantee that. We also had that I sub C was greater than or equal to zero. But if I sub B is greater than or equal to zero, well then, because it's a multiple of it, then I sub C would be greater than or equal to zero. So we've got that condition covered. And we also had that the voltage between the collector and the emitter needed to be greater than or equal to VCE sat, which is around 200 millivolts, but the voltage across a current source can be positive or negative. So we can't guarantee that. Of the five conditions that we had, we were able to build in three of them. And we're gonna have to check that the base current is positive 
and the voltage across the collector emitter is greater than or equal to VCE sat. We're going to assume a state, say we assume it's in the active region, then these are the two things you have to check to be consistent. So if the guess was wrong, we would have a contradiction here or here or both. What's the same methodology we used for diodes in chapter 9? Take a look at the next section, which is called the saturation region. When we operate in the saturation region, the base emitter diode and the base collector diode are both forward biased. And again, what am I taking a look at are what are all of the conditions on the voltages and currents when we're operating in that region. To do that, let me go back to page 1. Take a look at all the things that are true when you're in the saturation region. Operating where this black line is, and then we turn the corner and go active, but when we're operating over here, that's called the saturation region. Now, when you're operating over here, the value of the base emitter voltage would be equal to VBE on because the base current is greater than or equal to zero. The voltage across the collector emitter is just this value here, so it's equal to V sub CE sat. And we're operating over here, the collector current is greater than or equal to zero. And lastly, if we're operating in saturation, the collector current is somewhere along this line. And as you increase the voltage across the collector emitter, you then go active. When you're operating over here, the ratio of I sub C to I sub B is equal to beta F. But when you're just below that, it's less than that. That's our last condition, is that I sub C is less than or equal to beta F I B when we're operating in saturation. And those are the conditions that are on page two, and let's go back to that. The base emitter equals VBE on, about 0.7. Base current is greater than or equal to zero. The collector emitter voltage now is fixed at VCE set, around 200 millivolts. The collector current is greater than or equal to zero, and the ratio of the collector current to the base current is less than or equal to beta F. Beta F will be around 100 for most transistors. Now, can we build all of these conditions into a model? The answer is again, no. We can do some of them. If we make a guess, put this model in, if it's wrong, we have to get a contradiction. And those are the things that we can't force to be true. We'll do this first one here. That's just a battery between the base and the emitter. The third one is also a battery between the collector and the emitter. Now, the current needs to be positive or zero, but in a battery, you can have current go this way or go this way. The collector current needs to be greater than or equal to zero, but again, it can be this direction or this direction. And of course, the ratio can be anything. Of these five things that we have here, I guarantee two of them I have to check for the other three. You assume saturation. This is going to be our model. I have to check that the base current is greater than or equal to zero, the collector current is greater than or equal to zero, and that I sub C is less than or equal to beta FIB. Take a look at the next region called the cutoff region. Let's go back and look at the curves on page one and determine what's true when we're in the cutoff state. To be in cutoff is to be along this blue line for the base emitter and for the collector emitter. What's true over here? The base current is zero and the voltage across the base emitter is less than or equal to VBE on. Over here, the collector current is zero and the voltage across the collector emitter is greater than or equal to zero. Let's go back to page three and collect those. These are the four conditions that we had, that the base emitter was less than VBE on, the base current was zero, the collector current was zero, and the collector emitter voltage was greater than or equal to zero. So also to be in cutoff, the base emitter diode and the base collector diode are both reverse biased. Again, it's handy for checking the state of a transistor, but just using a voltmeter. But they have no current in the base and the collector, simply an open circuit. We got these two covered. The voltage across the base emitter is the voltage across an open circuit, and of course that can be positive or negative and the voltage across the collector and emitter can be positive or negative. We'll need to check for that. Our model, we're able to guarantee that these two things are true. What we can't guarantee is the value of the base emitter voltage, so we have to check that it's less than or equal to VBE on, and that the collector emitter voltage is greater than or equal to zero. Just like the diode, we had some edge conditions. There's gonna be two of these for transistors. I'll call the first one the edge of saturation, and this is where the active region model and the saturation model intersect. Okay, let me go back to page one and show you where that is. That would be right over here if, if we were at IB equals IB2. The things that are true is that we have a base current that's greater than or equal to zero. The value of VBE is equal to VBE on. The value now of VCE is equal to VCE sat, and also the ratio of IC to IB is equal to beta F. Those are our conditions to be at the edge of saturation. Let's go back to page three and take a look at that again. Base emitter equals VBE on, again a fixed voltage around 0.7. Base current is greater than or equal to zero. The collector emitter voltage now is equal to VCE sat, around 200 millivolts. 
and the collector current is equal to beta FIB, where beta F is around 100. Now, can we build a model that does all of these things? Again, the answer is no. I can have a fixed voltage here. I can have a fixed voltage here. I can write down that the current is a multiple of another current. We don't have a symbol that forces a voltage and a current to take on a value. Lastly, the current in the base needs to be in this direction. It's greater than or equal to zero, but in a voltage source, of course, it can go in either direction. So we're not able to satisfy this. We can get these other three things by building this circuit. And so we'll have to check that I sub B is greater than or equal to zero if we put this model in. Our second edge condition I'm going to call the edge of cutoff, and this will be the overlapping of the active model and the cutoff model. Again, let's go back to page one, take a look at where that is. We're operating right here at this point. I have that the base current is equal to zero, the base emitter voltage is equal to VBE on, and then we're operating over here along this blue line where the collector current is equal to zero, and it's also equal to beta FIB in that I sub B is equal to zero. And then lastly, along this line, we're greater than or equal to VCE set. We're intersecting the active model and the cutoff model. So they overlap right here. Let's go back to page four and take a look at that again. These conditions are that the base emitter voltage is equal to VBE on, the base current was zero, the collector emitter voltage is greater than or equal to VCE sat, and that the collector current is equal to beta FIB, but IB is equal to zero. Can we build this into a circuit? Most of it. Here's a voltage source but the current net voltage source is zero. So we're just gonna label that right on there to set it equal to zero. We don't have a symbol to make those two things happen simultaneously. And then our collector current being zero, just an open circuit, but the voltage across this open circuit can be positive or negative. We have to just check that it's greater than or equal to VCE set. But lastly, if we assume this model, we have all these conditions except this one, so we have to check for it. And this is a piecewise linear representation of a NPN bipolar transistor.